I, I'll have, have a few to pass out. And if you wanna if you wanna enter the passport contest, you'll need a session sticker, a showcase sticker, and a keynote sticker. The showcase and the keynote one you can get tomorrow. And when you have all three, you can enter for a prize drawing. So that would be fun. But today we're gonna go. We're, today we're gonna be going over Office 2013 and what's new in it. And I'll be honest, the Office 2013 is more of an incremental upgrade than than previous versions of Office, where really the, the biggest changes are, you know, it, it support for OneDrive, which is Microsoft's cloud storage platform. Think of Dropbox; it's just Microsoft's version. And support for and just like an overall new design, a new kind of a user interface that they're that they're working on, which has been refined even further. So. I'll start off with Word. We'll switch to Allen for Excel and PowerPoint, and then I'll finish off with Outlook. Um, does that sound good to you guys? Awesome. And if you have any questions, feel free to just raise your hand and you know, uh, whatever I'm doing, just ask. So the first, the first big change that comes with Word 2013 is this backstage view. The first thing that you'll see when you open uh, Word 2013 is the, uh, this. Uh, this view, this gallery, where you can take a look at different templates, and you might notice that it's all, uh, it's also connected directly to the web, so you can search for a template that you might not see over here. So let's say I want a resume template. If I click enter, and there's a bunch of different ones. Some of these aren't local. Some of these are just online. That when I click on them, it'll ask me to download them. So this is just a basic one. Scroll down. Create, and there's your template. And as you know, you know it's kind of it's the same old it's the same old word and it's the same old office that you know. It's just it's in a fresh coat of paint. And with this, it, it, for you know for some people, some people find it simpler, some people don't. That's it's really kind of like up to uh, personal preference. But the, the the objective was to kind of make it a little bit more user friendly. So if you're not you know familiar with all the keyboard shortcuts, you can still find what you're looking for using the ribbon. Does anybody have any questions so far? Awesome. So uh, one of the features that we want to show off is one of the more uh, cosmetic changes. Uh, Office 2013 allows you to put themes. So if you don't like the standard blue color and the standard black color, you have a few options. You have a background option. And you'll notice we have a magnifier. It might be hard to see. So you'll notice that there are some uh, there's some uh, circles and lines. That's one of the background options. <clears throat> and it also lets you change colors through a few predefined ones. So there's light gray. Click OK. When I go to the next stage, it should change. Dark gray, dark gray, and white. So it's just one of the it's one of the fewer cosmetic changes that lets you personalize the word. I guess you know if you have personal preferences for certain colors. Other than that, uh, there's uh, the design tab has been updated on the ribbon. Gives you a few more options. Get lets you get a little more uh, fine grained control over over graphics as well as tables and charts. So you'll, notice. so you'll notice, especially in the tables and charts, there, there are a lot of uh, extra features in terms of that. Tables have gotten a little bit uh, more robust. So they have, a, they have a bit of Excel's feature set so that you can, you, you can basically just copy a table from Excel and it will retain even some of the formulas if you transfer it over and it, it'll work properly because the engine that's powering them all is the same. They have a new feature which I'll show off. You can yeah, you can add pictures from online. So online pictures, it'll use the Bing search engine to help you find photos and you can you can sort by license if you're worried about Creative Commons. Can you explain what Creative Commons is to the group? Yeah. So Creative Commons just means that uh, so you know every every photo, everything that uh, that a creative person well, Everything that somebody creates automatically has uh, copyright on it. 
And some people, you know, some people don't care for copyright where they want to be able to share their work and have other people kind of modify it and reproduce it. And Creative Commons is the, the one of the easiest ways to do that. And it's a standard license. And I can kind of show off the website. That's meant to make uh, that's meant to make images, video, and any kind of creative work. It's meant to make it uh, easier to use for free and open uh, works. And so there are different levels of the Creative Commons license. So you can you can say whether or not you want your work to be free to distribute, but not to change, not to modify or sell for commercial use. But some people even just kind of like put it in the public domain almost, where you you're free to make modifications. You're free to sell it if for you know you're free to distribute it for commercial use, personal use. And one of the and one of the things that the Creative Commons button and attribution does is it lets you it, let, it makes sure that you're still giving credit where it's due in terms of where the original artwork is from. If you want to learn more about it, you can visit their website at creativecommons.org and they have a bunch of they, there are a lot of resources on Creative Commons. They even have a search engine that you can search the public domain or Creative Commons to find to find graphics and media that, you know, if you're worried about the copyright, um, if you're worried about copy, copyright infringement or being able to spread something without, you know, without forgetting to credit somebody, that's what the Creative Commons is for. So inserting pictures is also pretty cool and uh, by default uh, there is a safe search filter so you don't, you know, you usually don't have to worry about anything and you can modify the, you can modify the images as well. So I can search for, uh, let's see, what do you want to search for? Spies? Since that is the theme <laughs> of this tech academy. So yeah, you, and you'll notice that the search results that are given to us are licensed under Creative Commons like beforehand. So these images already have a Creative Commons license. And you can, uh, you can review specific licenses once you have inserted something. So uh, one of the one of the other improvements of Office 2013 is uh, alignment guides. So I can drag around this. Oh, let me change the wrapping first. So there there's a bunch of uh, there are a bunch of changes for you know changing layout quickly. So if I just tap on this image, you'll see that there's a layout button right there, and I can change the layout. So let's say I don't want it to be in line with text. I want it to be square. So one of the one of the cool things about Office 2013 is that there are alignment guides. So if I want to make sure that you know this image is at the is at the margin, that alignment guide will show up and it'll just snap to it. And that allows you know that allows uh, some extra flexibility when it comes to designing. Uh, if you're designing a publication or even a newsletter, and you want to make sure that you know everything kind of lines up. If you're kind of if you're a bit. Um, if you're a bit, you know, uh, detail oriented about that, I know I get crazy when something's not aligned. So it's <laughs> it's something that it's something that uh, you know I personally love. One of the another one of the new features of of Office 2013 is a new reading mode. And by default, when you download an Office, when you download like a Word document, it'll open up in the reading mode in a protected version of the reading mode, so you, you can't run any macros. And so what this does is it puts in an unresponsive be aware. You can even change the size, and you can just if you if you're not focused on editing a document, but more about reading it. So if this was like a, a large form, long form paper, I could just switch to reading mode by clicking this button on the bottom, and I'm in reading mode. And then it's easy to return back to just the print layout. Clicking that. Any questions so far? I may have covered this before oh. I arrived. So. Is 2013 going to be default here at the college? So yeah, we are. Uh, actually, that's a great question. I hadn't mentioned that yet. Uh, Office 2013 is rolling out next fall. This fall, this coming fall. Is that correct, Alan? Yes, it is. Yeah. So. And you can request it. Uh, so, you it should already on on some of the VDIs if it's been rolled out. Um, not yet. Right now, we're still working on some of the bugs. Uh, one of the big things that is scaring people at the moment is if you open up a like an old file, like a .doc file in Microsoft Word, they'll say this file's not compatible with the new version, even though it is. So we're just trying to figure out, okay, that's going to be a curveball to people who use this program. How do we turn that feature off? 
So it's just we're going through some minor testing to make sure that everything runs smoothly when it does get released to everyone. We're looking, uh, Tech Services is looking in the fall to have everyone migrate it over. So we got some time to pick up and uh, learn some tips and tricks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know there are a lot of there are a lot of new features in terms of Office 2013. One of the one one thing that's becoming more and more focused in terms of uh, word processors and documents in general is sharing a document and being able to collaborate on it. And so Office 2013 takes that makes it slightly simpler, where you can just share by email, presenting it online, or even just kind of like saving it to the cloud and sharing the link. And so this will make use of OneDrive. So if you're if you're if you're with a college, you already have one, and if you signed in with your Madison College ID, it'll just save directly to your OneDrive, and you can open, you can open it from there. You'll see OneDrive is here, and you can log in. Any questions? I have a question. Yes. As far as the OneDrive goes, now we already operate like a, a, for our office in OneDrive space, and we have people sign up with their College mm -hmm. ID. How is that going to affect when this rolls out? Everybody has one. Is it going to affect what goes into their account, or it should, no, it should affect? Yeah. So if you, uh, if I'm getting this uh, question right, uh, are you talking about a shared drive, or are you talking about uh, you already have like a OneDrive account? Our office has a OneDrive account that we share with other people in the college, like program okay. managers. Okay. So when they get their own individual account yeah. through so, this. 2013, how is that going to affect the account they've already set up with us? Is that going to affect so, the sharing? Okay, so the, the OneDrive that if they're already logged into it, it'll just be that one, but they, they, they'll have the option to sign out and sign into their individual one and share a document with that folder. But it's, it's set up with their Madison College oh, email. I see. Um, are you in a test pilot right now for OneDrive for staff, or is this one that was created at OneDrive.com? This was created at OneDrive.com. Okay. Um, my assumption will be that it's a shared folder. Um, you should still be able to use that OneDrive. It wouldn't have any effect on the, how you share right now. Even though we see this option here on the screen that says um, share to OneDrive, you do have to sign into the right account. So if you do have that one account that you use throughout the office, you still have to sign in. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. The people that we share with set their accounts up based on their Madison mm -hmm. College email. Are these going to be based on their Madison College email too? And is that going to cause a conflict? It sh um, I'm going to make the assumption for IT. It shouldn't cause any conflict. So this, this should go to their personal stuff, and the stuff that we share should still be in their share. Yes. Okay. So uh, that that sounds like uh, so one of the options that OneDrive does is if you, if it detects that you have two to OneDrive account, so like this will be like a this will roll out as a, an Office 365 for for business, and what it does is it'll ask you if this is a work account or a personal account, and it'll switch to the right one based on that. So if they set the if they set one up on their own using their Madison College ID, that's currently that's their personal ID, and when we roll out, it'll this have, will come out as business. Yeah, they'll they'll have like a work one, and it'll ask them. Which does one that one. mean that they'll now support our account? They they will support your account either way. Uh, one one cool new feature that we have, which I don't think I'll be able to demonstrate today, is that you can now open and edit PDFs in Microsoft Office Word, and it's it's a bit of a limited support, but you know it's more than enough functionality for most people in everyday use. Do we have a test PDF that you can just kind of play around with? Um, you can go up to our shared drive. Yeah, and you said edit as well, correct? Yeah, you can open and edit. Yeah. I don't think I have access to the shared right from here. All right. Yeah, I won't be able to. If we have some time at the end, I'll I'll look into giving off a demo. But for now, I'll just I'll let you know that the, that that's an option. Other than that, there's really you know, I guess the next the next move or really last part of this would be navigation in a document. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So yeah, there's a there's a new navigation pane that lets you kind of just kind of skip through different headings in your document. So let's say you you're you're pretty organized and you use headings and different um, I guess different styles for different parts of your for your document. You can use the navigation pane if it's a, if it's an especially long document to kind of just take a look at like where you want to be. So I can skip to objectives, experience, skills, education. And oftentimes you'll even notice that the it'll let you do it over here too. So if you see this tooltip, that means that I can collapse this when I'm reading it. And the skills, the skills column will collapse. Same thing with education and references. Any questions? But that's how many if you use. So the, uh, Office Office does it by default if you're using styles and headers. Okay. So this also works with lists out of the kind of out of the box. It's just like a base functionality. So if you have like some text, I can show you right now. Oftentimes, if, if something's collapsible, also this only this only affects when you're editing it. This won't show up in the in the print view. You'll see the whole thing. It'll be you know it'll be expanded. But so like if you're if you're in a particularly long document and it has several sections, you can use the navigation pane. And if you didn't see the first time when I opened it, you just go to view the view toolbar and check on navigation pane. So do that, and it'll show you that you can navigate through pages, use thumb, thumbnails. You can search through your document. So Hello, and shows me exactly where Hello World is and marks it up. And you can see just the different parts of your document. It makes navigation for the, you can't really see the benefit over here just because it's such a short document. But when you have like a if you have a research paper or a document that has guidelines, it's, it's always much nicer to kind of just skip through the headings. That'll be most of that's the, those are most of the changes of Office 2013. If you have any specific questions, let me know now, and then we'll switch into which one are you starting with first? Let's go ahead and go with Excel, the hard one. Okay. <laughs> so, any questions so far? We're doing all right? Awesome. Great. Right. Alan? Okay, go ahead and I will. Um, but I need to show you something real fast. Okay. Uh, we're live streaming to YouTube right now. And in case everyone here doesn't know, we are live streaming to YouTube right now. So if you need a refresher, this session will be recorded. You can go back and rewatch it. Um, but uh, when you want to switch to me, mm -hmm. click here. Okay. When you want to switch to the laptop, click there. Awesome. And please forgive me. My daughter kept me up most of the <laughs> night. She is now 10 months old and teething. So I feel like I'm slurring a lot. And if I do, I apologize. <laughs> All right, so what we have here are, um, what, what I'm going to go into is Excel 2013. And then I'm going to follow that up with PowerPoint 2013. We have this new icon, green X icon here, Excel 2013. And everything has a new look about them. We can, and it, um, we can go into the templates, we can start a blank worksheet. Everything about Excel is relatively the same. I'm gonna start a blank workbook. And inside here, it looks a little different. In the upper left-hand side, we still got the file, just like how Akbar was saying, we got the backstage view, where you could go in and save to your computer, to OneDrive, uh, you can save to different areas, we can get information about the workbook. We can export this out as a different file type. We can print this out and get a print preview of our document. I don't have an Excel document right now. Uh, but these are all different items that we can go into and look about our document. And this is actually current in Excel 2010. I'm going to click this arrow here, not the left-hand side, to go back. 
Uh, what throws people off a lot in the new version is the tabs and the way everything looks. Let me see if I still have Excel loaded on here. Excel 2010. We got the tabs here, which contain a lot of different information, you know, the different things that we would normally use in Excel. We go to the new one, they are still there, only it's listed differently. Microsoft went with more of a monochrome type look to make everything look flat. You may notice everything's going flat, websites, um, everything's starting to look very, I don't want to say generic, but very flat and very simple. And that's why they made it this way. Um, and I'm sorry, did you go over how to customize your view to darken it and lighten it? Oh, I didn't. I went through okay. the themes. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, this is a little bright for me. I got Coke bottle vision, and it's getting harder for me to do differentiate colors now as I'm uh, work more with computers. So for me, I do need to go in and adjust this. Uh, I'm going to adjust the color of my workbook by going into the file menu and going into options. And then from there, I'm going to go from this general portion and look for the office theme. Right now, it's set for white. I'm going to set it for dark gray because that helps me see the different tabs in the different areas. If you're having trouble seeing things, you might want to switch this out. All your Excel formulas that you know are the same. One, two, three, equal, sum, this, close, they still work. <laughs> Four, five, six, equal, and it gives me an error code, that's all right. But as I'm going through, and it's giving me little hints, oh, this you want to do a sum, that's okay. But as I hit the enter key, I want you to pay attention to this area, which I'm circling now with my mouse, and see what happens. Do you see that it kind of like cycled through and gave us the final answer? There's a lot more animation to this. And these are just kind of cosmetic things that are affecting um, your program. So how is that going to affect speed? I mean, how quickly it saves the document or something? It actually helps out a lot. Um, um, it helps out a lot. It helps you recognize when you're entering a formula. If you're just looking at this here and you have no idea where you're at, if you click on here, click on here, it tells you the formula just like how it normally would. But to answer the speed question, if you need to find the sum of something, I highlighted, whoops, that's the wrong highlight. There you go. There. I highlighted everything in this particular column. And if you take a look in the lower right hand corner, it gives me the average of everything here. It gives me a count and it gives me a sum. And then we turn on the magnifying program so we could all see. The sum, the count, and the average, just because I highlighted this section here. And then which button did you click on at the bottom of the screen? I didn't have to click anything. Oh, you did. You just all I had to do is select everything and I'll pop all that up here. Hmm. But I, the formula that I'm using is actually doing a lookup. Okay. And there's like 7,000 rows that it does. <laughs> is it going to take my program forever to calculate that? It shouldn't. Um, with this version of Office, it comes in two flavors. It comes in a 32-bit version and a 64-bit version. The um, difference between the two is computing power. If you can, and you're worried about speed, especially with Excel documents and 6,000 rows of data, see if you can convince the help desk to give you the 64-bit version, because that will utilize a lot more processor, that will utilize a lot more RAM. Am I correct on that? Okay. Yeah, uh, you definitely need to make sure that your, your laptop has four gigabytes or more of RAM, because that's, that's the requirement for 64-bit. And uh, another another note is that these animations don't actually slow, slow down the calculations because they don't actually occur until after the calculation is done. And awesome. so it's just like a it's it's just a bit of a visual cue to kind of show you that 
you know, what was there isn't there anymore to make sure that, you know, this used to be a formula and now we're putting something else there. Now it's not letting me go to where I want to go. The big difference between this version and the last version is the ability to share with uh, other people. I'm going to go back to the file version. I'm going to save this to a OneDrive. And even though it has Aquar up here listed as the person signed in, I can sign in with my own OneDrive account. And this is one that I set up with OneDrive.com. And hopefully, I will have remembered my password. Yes! <laughs> um, but OneDrive is essentially, uh, it's like the S drive or the H drive that you have here at work. But it's owned by Microsoft. And whenever you log on to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, you're able to bring it in and actually share it with other people. Do I have anything in here? Whoops, save as. And I'm going to call this test, and I'm going to save this. Now I'm going to go back to OneDrive here. And I'm going to sign in with my username and password. I'm not going to save this here. But I just uploaded this file called test. Oops, I need to close this out. Okay. There we go. Now that file that I just had up is now available here. I can edit this online through Excel online, or I can open it up back in Excel. So it doesn't matter if I'm away from my desk and I need to work on it. I can do simple cal calculations online, or I can actually open this up in Excel, do all my complicated work, save it, and it'll go right back up to OneDrive. Is that the benefit of OneDrive online? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Does this version work with advanced features? Not the online version. It does some, but um, where it lacks, I'm not sure. In terms of, uh, it will do like um, it should do lookup formulas. It should do other basic formulas. But if you got some sort of weird macro-based thing, it may not work. We do. We turn on track changes so we can see who changed what on okay. the documents that we keep on out there. Does it? It doesn't work with the online version now. Not right now. That's oh. one of the other advanced features. But um, if I wanted to, I'm going to open this in Excel online. I'm going to add another row. Nine, eight, seven, seven, six, three, and one more. Yeah, I'm not a good typing right, typer right now. <laughs> hey, Alan, would you mind going into the review tab? Sure. Because I think they may have updated. Ooh, there we are. New well, comment, comments. show comments. They have comments. They don't have tracking changes yet. Mm -hmm. And when I'm done, it automatically saves to uh, Excel online. I can open this up back in um, Microsoft Excel on my desktop. Yes, I do want to open this. Thank you for being so considerate for my safety. Now, it's a little annoying, but at the same time, it's great. You do have to enter your username and password every time. If you're on a different machine or if you're at a, uh, yeah, if you're on a machine that's not your own. Enable editing. That comment that I made shows up. Everything that I typed in here shows up. So that's one of the biggest benefits of Office 2013. It allows for more collaboration. It allows for you to save your file in different places. 
I also wanted to mention that uh, you might notice that it opened in Excel 2010 instead of 2013, and that's just because there, there's more than one Excel installed on this. Mm -hmm. So it just got confused as to which version. Yeah. But yeah, it does work with older versions of Excel as well, so that's always a nice thing. Now, this is my program right here, PowerPoint. Um, I'm a big, I like to search stuff, so you may see me go to the start menu here in the lower left hand corner, and then there's this box that says search programs and files. I'm going to type in PowerPoint, and it brings up everything related to PowerPoint. I love PowerPoint. <laughs> it is uh, pretty ridiculous at how much I really love it. <laughs> but with this, you get new themes. You can start out with a blank presentation, or you can start something out that looks pretty awesome. Okay. I have Camtasia loaded on here, so it's bugging me to say, hey, do you want to use Camtasia? And that's all right. When you start off with a theme, you get to choose a layout right away. I like this blue layout. I'm going to click Create. Then it loads it up right away. Notice the size of this theme, though. This is what we call 16 by 9. In the new version of PowerPoint, your presentations are going to be 16 by 9 by default, the HD TV, the movie format. If you have an older presentation that's more in a square format, it will still open it up just fine. You'll still be able to work on that file just fine. And I'd like to mention that so the 16 by 9 format is generally better if you're using a TV to project. And the four by three format, which you can you can still use, is better for when you're projecting, just because those are the formats that these uh, mediums come with. We got it. I'm gonna go ahead and add a title. Now up here under home, I'm gonna add a new slide. I'm gonna add title and content. So everything that you've used in PowerPoint is still available here. I'm going to go to the Insert tab, and this is where we can have a lot of fun. One of the things that we can do is, oh, that's Adobe Presenter. Under Media here, we can add a video. We can add an online video. Microsoft has been toying with us for a while, back in 2010. They gave us the ability to add YouTube videos, and they take it away. <laughs> so I'm going to add a video. Uh, Madison College Seal. Search for whatever it is that you're looking for. Pops up a bunch of different selections. Hey, there's Jimmy. He's in. <laughs> Insert. Stretch this out a little bit. I'm clicking and holding, clicking and dragging. And when Akbar was tell, talking about the alignment guides in Word, we have them in PowerPoint as well. Right now it's lining up with uh, this text here box, this text box here, and the center of the presentation. I wanted to, I could scoot it over here to the far left side. It will still line up all the way to the margin. For you perfectionists out there, this is a godsend. Uh, let's play this video and see how it looks. Uh, we still got our four familiar buttons, including the slideshow view on the lower right hand side. Let's go ahead. Whoops, that's not good. Slide two. Slide two. Come on. Why do you no play for me? There we go. Hopefully this has the latest version of Flash installed. Connection Learning Community is a, a faculty learning community we started last fall and um, we implemented on it. There we go. Now, the reason why I was having trouble starting this video is that I am seeing something called Presenter View. This 
display settings. Whoops, let me turn that off. Here we go to show you what I'm seeing. When you have a presentation and you've got a laptop and you're projecting to a computer, you have what's called a uh, presenter view. Now, in the upper left-hand corner, it tells you the time. It shows you a lot of things. But one of the cool things that's new about this is the ability not only to um, advance your slide, but this little button right here. If you take a look underneath Jimmy, follow his bow tie all the way down, we got this little button right here. That's something that's been added to. Um, let me get over there. That's something that's been added to um, PowerPoint. When I click that button, see how the screen went black? It went black right here. It's sort of like the pause mute button here, or turning off the projector without actually shutting it off. And I can swap my displays on the fly. Sometimes PowerPoint gets really confused as to what's the projector and what's in presenter display. If I click this button, I can swap the presenter view so that I can see the presenter view on here. And you get to see the YouTube video up there. If you ever given a presentation you want to get out, hit the escape button, you can get out. Oops. Give me one second. Duplicate this. There. So I don't know about you, but this is one of the key things that people have been asking for here at campus. Instructors, staff, faculty, everybody, students have been asking for the ability to add YouTube videos. Beforehand, and you didn't hear this from me out there, and you didn't hear that from me in here. You would have to download the video to your computer and embed it. Now you just get the link to the video and put it in. Therefore, you're legal now. And if you're still doing it, stop it. I had a quick question. Yes. When you go back to the presenter view. Mm -hmm. Let's go to presenter view. Uh, there's another way of getting there. If I go to the slideshow, I could go to from current slide. From current slide, and you want me to pull it up there? I want the presenter view. Okay, pulling it up on the slideshow. Uh, so that <coughs> that button on the bottom left is that for marking it up, or is that like a pointer? Okay. Yeah, they actually made it a little easier for you to use. I'm gonna go to click on this, and I can. Uh, this is available in 2010, but it's a really tiny one that you had to push. Now they got it right there front and center. If I click on that, I can turn it into a laser pointer. I can turn it into a pen or a highlighter. With a laser pointer, I can say, hey, check this out. Whoops, and there you flip this around. I got my laser pointer turned on. And Jimmy is always rocking a bow tie at least once a week. <laughs> and that is pretty awesome. Now if I, whoops, there we go back. If I go back into pen mode, I can go back and draw. I can pretend I'm John Madden. <laughs> and I can see all the slides here on my end. Okay, there we go. Another cool thing about presenter view, if you're a presenter, you can bring up all your presentation slides in one shot without having to exit the presentation. So if you had a long presentation and you wanted to skip from slide one to slide 10, no longer do you have to fumble through, advance each individual slide. Just open up this slide view by clicking this button here. See all slides. Every slide will pop up. You just go to the slide that you want. And then that will pop up on your screen here. Where am I at? I want to keep those things. All right. That message that popped up it was asking, do you want to save those uh, those writings that you did, or do you want to discard them? I chose save, and now look at this. 
what I wrote is now available here. Uh, a couple other things about PowerPoint that you might want to be that you might be interested in. Akbar touch base on online pictures where you could go in and um, add a picture. Let me add a new slide. There we go. You can add a picture online. You can add a photo album, which is a multiple, a multiple pictures of one presentation. Or you could go into this section called My Apps. This has been uh, this is inspired by Google. If you ever use Google uh, Chrome, you can install apps through that browser so that you can play games, uh, check your email, do all sorts of crazy things with that browser. Well, now Microsoft has taken a look at that and they said, "Hey, we should try to do this with our with our products." If I click this My Apps button, it will open up the Microsoft Store, the App Store Office Store. And then I can add some groovy things to this presentation. Ooh, tips for PowerPoint 2013. It allows me to do tutorials off of my presentation. That's cool. Well, let's see what we have for visual visualization. You can add a mind map to your PowerPoint presentation by installing an app. A stock ticker. You can add a poll. You can add all these things that will incorporate inside of your PowerPoint presentation. Yes, I trust this. I have no idea what I just did because this is the <laughs> first time I've seen this and it looks awesome. So I'm like, yeah, I'll go ahead and try it. Hey, it's Tech Academy. Why not? <laughs> That's still loading, but um, you can do other things besides inserting pictures or inserting video. One other cool thing that you can do here uh, before I turn it over back to Akbar is a screen recording. If you were in the um, OneNote 2010 session, you, you saw that you were able to add a screenshot to your presentation. If you weren't, you can add a screenshot to your presentation. This also works in Microsoft Word. The way it works is that you Bring up something that you want to take a picture of. Um, MadisonCollege.edu. It could be any program, any website, but it has to be open in the background. Take a screenshot. It knows that that is in the background here. I click on it, and it pulls it into my presentation. Let's start a new slide. This time, I'm going to add a recording. If I go to Insert, Screen Recording, I'm just going to highlight this section here. I'm going to record. Gives me a countdown. And did anyone catch that? It said Windows key, Shift, and Q to quit. But I'm going to go in here. I'm going to do a search for Tech Academy. This is how you search for Tech Academy. You can do your presentation here online. And when you're done, do that keyboard shortcut that says Windows key, Shift, and Q to stop. And now we have this video right here. And I can stretch this out so it'll be bigger. It has a really bad microphone on this thing, so we're not going to go with the mic on here. But yeah, you could actually use PowerPoint to create a screencast. Uh, do you know if there's a limit to? I would keep it still under a minute. You don't want to do a full on screencast on here, but you know, keep it short and sweet. All right, um, we're crunching into the 150 mark. I know that some people want to go into another session. So, Akbar, do you want me to go over Outlook, or do you want to take over? Um, so, what well, I think what I'll mention is that. Um, I don't. I don't think we'll be able to go in depth with Outlook. One thing that I will mention is that the apps that you you were just showing off, they they'll be available throughout all of the Office. Well, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and Outlook. And one one example, you know, for instance, is like if you're in Outlook, 
what it'll do is you can you can have your calendar set up if you use Uber a lot. You can have your calendar set up with Uber, and it'll directly you know it'll call your cab. You know the the proper amount of time before you need to get there. You'll see traffic, and it'll transfer to your phone. And those are just kind of those are just that's just like one possibility of what you can do with these kind of powerful tools. Um, if you since we are out of time, um, there there are several ways to learn more about these features. CETL offers several courses. We also have like online resources that you can come in and we occasionally do face to face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we occasionally do face to face trainings. So if you want something more in depth for a specific application like Excel or PowerPoint, or if you want to just I guess play around with it and just kind of figure out, you know, let's see what I can learn. We offer a bunch of resources. And we make use of a resource called GCF FreeLearn, which is run by the Google Community Foundation. And they, they host a ton of tutorials for Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint, and all basically every version of Word, PowerPoint, and Excel that you would probably be using. And so the first part of all of our courses on, on the new versions of Office have, have a section about what's new in Office 2013 or what's new in Office 2010. What was the GC Foundation or? It's called the GCF Free uh, Learn Free and it's run by the Google Community Foundation. So you can see it over here. And they host a ton of tutorials, so what I'll do is go to all topics. And so you'll notice they have some for basic computer computer use. And what we're focused on is really Office. So from Office XP all the way up to Office 2013, they have tutorials for Access, Excel, PowerPoint, pretty much anything that you would want to learn about PowerPoint in a very user-friendly, uh, you know, re really accessible way to do it. So like I'll show off the PowerPoint 2013. And it you know it goes over what the it goes over the OneDrive goes over what Office 365 is, as well as what's new and getting to know PowerPoint. And there are videos as well as an intro. Some of these even have exercises that you can complete to kind of test yourself on whether or not you know something. So it's a, it's a really powerful resource. That's awesome. And we will be having the more um, in depth. Office trainings uh, um, late summer, right into convocation, and right after convocation. So start to see them soon. Um, any questions? I know this is kind of a quick intro. There's a lot of things, a key thing to remember what you've been doing with Office, you can still do. They've added a lot extra that can make things fun. Um, but you don't have to do those extras. You can still keep using Office the way that you normally would. They haven't taken anything out, in other yeah. words. <laughs> anyway, thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank Hope you. you guys have fun. <laughs> do we have uh, the feedback forms? Oh, um, yeah, they're somewhere. Um, before you leave, if you if you mind, uh, if you don't mind, if you want us to, you know, have any feedback on what we did well, what we what we didn't. This would be great for us to improve future sessions and make sure that you know we're we're teaching what we're supposed to be teaching and that everybody's getting something good out of this.